we've <laughs> we've managed to find the leopard. I cannot see it in this really thick area. If look, if Ferg's zooms out, you might be able to just have an idea of where we are. So we just on the other side of the drainage line. Um, Rexon did also help us help us find this leopard. Um, he walked just on top of the the dam wall. But you see how thick it is now below this jackalberry. The kill is literally hidden right in here, and this leopard. Um, managed to, well, is lying just off to the side. Now, I wonder, I wonder if, and I might try reposition, I think, if I go up to the top there, Fergs, I think we're going to have a better view. Yeah. Um, so now, <laughs> after getting in here, which wasn't easy, I'm going to have to try get out again, drive around, and I think if I stop up there, we might have a, let me just move forward here quickly. Let's just see if we can get a view from here. Um, okay, firstly, let's show you the kill. Right here. Oh, sorry, there we go. Let me just move. That's the kill, and it looks like a, an Inyala. Uh, that's what it looks like. Now, I still haven't been able to see um, if this is a male or female leopard. I can't, um, just uh, we've seen a few few rosettes hiding in the in the grass. Uh, apparently, a few of you that got to see it on the dam cam are thinking that it's Tingana. That would be interesting. That would be very interesting because we, I mean, yesterday um, yesterday morning Tristan had Tingana on Chitwa Chitwa, so. It's quite a distance for him to walk uh, in one evening and make a kill, but very possible. But I'm, I'm not, uh, I'm not sure if it is him. If it is him, it would be really lucky. All right. Well, I think uh, let me try and sit and re or maybe reposition. See if we can get a better view of this leopard. In the meantime, let's go back across to Steve, who's looking at some beautiful flowers. At this, we have managed to get a view of this beautiful leopard, busy cleaning himself. And I think this is Tingana. It, look, it looks like a big male Tingana. Maybe some of you can give me confirmation. Um, but it, it looks like it, an old male that we see around here. That's interesting. He's covered quite a distance there from Chitra. Well, not unusual for leopards to cover big distances like that. And he's managed to kill a male bushbuck. That's what it was. Um, I'd, I managed to get a better view of that kill. So a male bushbuck, which is a very decent kill for um, for this leopard. And he's in a perfect area to hide and feed and he's close to water. So at the moment, this leopard has done very, very well for himself. And he had fed on uh, quite a bit of the carcass. The I would say the the rump of the carcass. Quite a bit of the meat had been fed on already, but there's still a lot there. So I think this leopard will still be here for, for at least a day or so, um, maybe even two, until that kill is finished. Possibly, if he feels threatened, he might take it up into one of these these trees. And there's some big jackalberries around here. Just off to the left is a big jackalberry. So if he did feel threatened, he might. Or if he did want to try and save this kill, he might take it up there. But the nice thing is, is that he's in such a thick area, the grass, the grass could also potentially mask the scent of the kill. So I think he's, he's managed to do very 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 well for himself and uh, apparently a lot of you very excited that it is Tingana and um, and yeah I think this is this is wonderful news for us because mm, uh, is it uh, Carol or Kel sorry you say he was also scent marking Carol um sorry Carol <laughs> I can't get it. I can't get it. Durban Carol. 
Carol. <laughs> Carol. Carol. Yeah, but pronounce him dude. <laughs> sorry, Carol. Uh, 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 sorry, I'm uh, so uh, K-E-L. Cal. Cal? Um, you say that uh, Tingana was also sent marking. So that is that is good news. He, it looks like... Um, and, and for those of you um, who haven't seen this male leopard for a while, he he lost quite a lot of condition. I, I don't know exactly what happened to him, if he if he got injured or, or what happened, um, but he, he lost a lot of condition. He was looking really, really thin um, and, and, and quite gaunt. But... Um, but he managed to feed on a carcass at Chitra Chitra Dam, um, which we're not sure if he killed or if a young male leopard, Tamba, who was seen together with him, if that leopard managed to make the kill. However, this male uh, kept that young male off the carcass and fed on it, which obviously gave him quite a bit of energy. And he's now moving around a lot again. And because he was hanging around Chitra Dam for... Oh, gee, at least a week or almost two weeks, I think. So, um, so to see him moving around, oh, he's got a, quite a nasty tick just below the eye. He'll probably clean that off at some point. Um, but he's moving around a lot. He's scent marking, so that's a good sign. Um, he's potentially building his energy again so he can defend his territory. So for him to kill this bushpack... It's a huge success for this male leopard, and possibly we might see him gaining even more condition and looking really, really good in in the weeks to come. It um, sounded like, and I saw a few images this morning just before we came on drive, there was a lot of activity at this dam last night. There was, um, There were hippo having a bit of a standoff, the white-tailed mongoose. Um, it sounded like lions calling in the distance. I don't know if, if there was a lion seen actually on the dam cam in the early hours of this morning. I think so. Um, and then, of course, this, this uh, male leopard that dragged the kill right in front of the, um, the camera. I'm going to spend some time with this leopard and see if he does decide to feed on that carcass again. He looks quite relaxed now. Let's go across to Steve, who's also relaxed and looking for some smaller creatures out on bushwalk. Oh, you can see he's now lying down a bit. He's cleaned himself. Now he's resting. Starlight, is he back to defend his territory? Possibly, possibly Starlight. I don't, I, you know, I don't know. I don't know. Um, I, I, I've seen, okay, so let's put it this way. I've seen leopards get challenged um, in a fight and kind of get pushed out. Um, and a few months later kind of still hang around and then almost take back part of their territory. Um, so I have seen that before. Um, and it, look, if this male, if Tingana manages to, to feed and gain condition, and who knows, may, perhaps that uh, other male, Hukamuri, who has been challenging Tingana, uh, perhaps he doesn't arrive back for a while. It could give Tingana time to recover and, um, and maybe regain this territory. Uh, you see, there's a lot of variables. But, you know, I think... Uh, if that Hukumuri male is, has been a nomadic male for a while, perhaps he's still moving around trying to look for ideal territory. Maybe he sets it up somewhere else. Might not necessarily be here, but um, it will be interesting to see how the story unfolds and what happens. But I cannot be sure. I cannot be sure. You know, one thing I've realized being in the bush for so many years is that um, we can never really tell what's going to happen. You can think you you know and understand the animals really, really well. And they will always do something that surprises you. <laughs> I think this 
Leopard is very content at the moment. He um, he's, he's full. He, he definitely fed on a lot of it, a lot of that bushbuck carcass. Um, and apparently, some of you got to see the kill on camera. That's amazing. That's very very fortunate. It just shows you what actually happens when we when we're not on drive, when we or sound asleep at night. There's so much activity out in the in in the wild. All right, let's see if Tingana decides to move in the next little while. I won't spend too much time with him. Just see if he does decide to move. But if but in the meantime, let's go across to Taylor and find out how her drive is going this morning. Well, Tingana is sleeping. <laughs> That's what he is doing. But have a look how full his belly looks at the moment. So he is very, very content. He's got a lovely little spot to, to rest there. Michael, um, you're asking about habituating leopards that aren't from the Sabi Sands. Well, so Michael, generally, generally, most of the leopards in the Sabi Sands were born in this area. Um, obviously, now and then, we may get leopards coming in from uh, possibly the Manialeti, which is north of us. Um, you could get leopards coming in from Kruger. So... Um, ideally, the, the best way to habituate a leopard is in a scenario like this, for example. So, track and find where they've made a kill and possibly follow a drag mark where they've dragged a, a kill or hoisted it into a tree. And then what we would do is just park a vehicle, and but probably keep a decent distance that the leopard felt comfortable and just wait and watch and spend time with that leopard at a kill. Usually, usually they start relaxing. The best way is obviously when if you can find the leopards as cubs because then uh, then you can spend time with them and the mother and the female and uh, most of the time the female would be, would be relaxed and the, that way the cubs would be relaxed. So the cubs get used to the vehicles fairly early on in life and they become somewhat relaxed and habituated um but uh but yeah the best is if they've made a kill and you manage to find them and then just park and wait i know some areas what they would uh, possibly do if a leopard had a kill even just park a vehicle and leave it there so that um that uh, the um the leopard gets used to the vehicle being around the smell and and eventually a leopard will come back and, and feed. It's the best way to try and habituate leopards. But again, some leopards are just quite skittish and they um, and shy, and they don't uh, they don't hang around for too long. I know we see we see leopards uh, up in the um, Timbavati, and the, you know this was um, actually we had a wonderful sighting in. December, was it January? Uh, yeah, it was in January, the beginning of Jan. Um, I was up there over December, January, and managed to find a female leopard with a, with a youngster, a sub-adult, about a year and a half. Um, the youngster was a little bit more relaxed, but the female still, uh, even as an adult, very, very shy, not happy with vehicles being around. Saw her briefly, and she moved off. She, she kind of disappeared into the bush and didn't come out again we get glimpse of her now, uh, glimpses of her now and then but she's very very um, elusive and doesn't enjoy vehicles very much that's probably I don't know just her nature but it's it's interesting to, interesting to see you know leopards that if they don't want to be seen you're not going to find them that's for sure it's a lovely little image of Chingana resting down there in the corner now I think um, we're probably going to leave this male soon. And 
just to, I think, give him some time to rest. Now, Judy, you're asking about um, leopard photographs. And, um, are you asking about photographs that I've taken of leopards? And if I ever edit out the ticks, um, well, Judy, no, I don't. Um, <laughs> Judy, to tell you the truth, I wouldn't even know how to. <laughs> I'm a game ranger. I'm not very tech savvy. So I don't, I actually don't really edit my photographs. Um, if anything, I might try crop them a bit. I know how to do that. Um, and then, uh, and then uh, use them for a bit of social media or whatever. But, um, but no, I don't, I don't edit or change, uh, what, a, what an animal looks like. Not at all. I find that's defeating the object. You want to see an animal in its natural state. If it's, if it's got a cut above the lip or a tick on the cheek or, um, you know, that's that's a wild leopard. That's what you want, want to see. There's no point in editing all that out. Well, in my opinion, I think uh, if you edit photographs too much, I think you're defeating the object personally. I mean, anyway, that's, that's my thoughts on photography. <laughs> Okay, I think, you know, we're going to leave this male leopard. We will come past again later, um, but let's leave him and let him rest, and let's go see what else we can find. In the meantime, let's go back across to Steve, who's still enjoying his walk. Uh, I don't see him. Hold on. Let's just check where the kill is. Maybe he's feeding. That would be great. Yeah, here he is. Here he is. He's right on the kill. Hold on. Folks, have you got him there? Is that okay? Oh, there we go. So he's on the kill. Now I wonder, um, folks, I wonder from across the other side if we might not have a nice view of his face. Let, let's try that. Hold on a second. Just stick with us. Uh, let's just try get to the other side there quickly. I can go down, yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's go through here. Yeah, so, actually, it's strange. The temperature, it's almost like, oh, sorry. <laughs> Fergs, I'm sorry, I promise it's not... On purpose, I can't see those holes. Every now and then, Fergs comes and slides next to me. <laughs> you want to sit in the passenger seat? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Oh, dear. This is going to be tricky now. There's that quarry bush in the way. Well, he's done a great job of managing to hide this kill. Hold on. Let's just see. Now, what's he limping? I'm just trying to have a look. Let's just be patient and wait, and he's possibly going to move. Let's just see. <laughs> Sorry, folks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah no, it's, uh, it's terrible. <laughs> well... I think Tingana and I are in the same boat, Taylor. <laughs> oh, but we have got a lovely view of him, and he's busy feeding on that carcass. And there's a lot of meat left for this leopard, so he's definitely going to enjoy this for about a day, I reckon. Oh, isn't that wonderful? Now we've got a really nice view of him. See, just as I, I said earlier, Come back later, maybe we have better luck, and he's just started feeding again. So, our timing is perfect, and I'm glad this leopard has got a decent sized kill. And he doesn't have to share with anybody, he's well hidden, as I was saying. And there are some trees nearby that he can hoist that kill into if he has to. Don Z, I, have I ever seen a leopard or lion without a tail? I have. I have indeed. 
I've seen two lionesses uh, without without a tail. So, um, Donzi, what happened was, um, I think it was uh, 2000, but that seemed to have just lost you there briefly. But uh, we still got a lovely view of, of the leopard. Um, so I was explaining about the lions that uh, that I saw without a tail. So about 2007, 2008, there was um, the Salala Pride, uh, three females uh, and uh, adult female, or no, slightly older female, with her two offspring. Um, they were, but they were about, they were sub-adults. <laughs> they were sub-adults uh, back then, and um, they were feeding on a kill, and the hyena came in, outnumbered them, attacked them, and the eldest lioness tried to defend the kill and um, and protect the youngsters. And the hyena attacked her and managed to bite her tail off. So she was known as the tailless lioness. But then, surprisingly, in 2009, um, it was, I forget these dates, 2009 or 2010, I can't remember, Similar situation, same pride, on a kill. Um, they had some young cubs with them. Uh, hyena came in, a uh, few lionesses ran off with the cubs just to protect them. And um, the the daughter of that old lioness stayed to protect the kill. And the hyena attacked her. And so both lioness and the hyena carried on they were fine hundred percent fine but um, but both tails bitten off All right, I'm gonna try such a <laughs> thanks Taylor well I mean it's always just nice to spend time with this big leopard in a just move the carcass a bit I'm gonna forward I think we'll have a better view yeah. There we go. Thanks. Is that a bit better? There we go. All right, and maybe our signal holds up nicely here. Yeah? Oh, look at that. That's a lovely view of him. And he lifted that bush back almost like it was nothing. Just moved it slightly, and it's quite a. I mean, it's a fairly large male. Mary, you asked for for my last tip of the day. Um, what can it be? What can it be? Let me think about that, Mary, for a second. Um, actually, you know what? Uh, I think why don't we why don't we make the tip of the day a bit about conservation? And I think uh, because you know the. Uh, conservation goes hand in hand with um, with tourism, and it's very very important, I think, for all of us, all of us, not just uh, the staff at uh, Wild Earth or Safari Live, not just the presenters or the cameramen, but all our viewers, just to create awareness about conservation of animals worldwide, not just in Africa, but the protection and preservation of areas and wildlife. So that's my tip of the day is every little bit counts. And, um, and, I think, uh, and I think the more we speak about conservation, protecting animals, the more can be done. Um, and educating people that uh, wildlife cannot be used for, uh, for medicinal uses or, or myths like the rhino horn or elephant tusks or pangolin. And tomorrow is apparently World Wildlife Day. And I think they're focusing on, on big cats at the moment. There are areas around the world where they, where they kill leopards for pelts. Or, so anyway, that's my tip of the day. Is We need to work together for conservation. Tourism, conservation, all goes hand in hand. And, um, and every little bit helps. Just the awareness and and trying to protect these wonderful animals, which we are able to view and spend time with. 
little bit of a serious one, but I think important nonetheless. And it's been great again being back on Safari Live. I've really enjoyed it. It was a great stint with Ali and Tristan. And nice to see all the other other staff again. I haven't seen Nikki and Scott for ages. It's good to see them. And Taylor, obviously, back from the Mara in full force. <laughs> so good to see Taylor. An exaggeration. No way in nowhere near leopard man of africa <laughs> tristan definitely has luck with leopard um he actually saw kuchava the other day in the cub i haven't seen that leopard so but we did see tandy well, not the cub though but we saw tandy about a week ago just over a week ago when we had all that rain nice to see that new male in the area It's always interesting when you have different leopards coming into areas, fighting for territory. Changes the dynamic a little bit, uh, but it's good. New genes and all very important for the growth of the leopard population. Bobby, ticks, from my understanding, um, I don't think they can uh, really cause uh, tick bite fever or anything like that for, for these big cats. But, uh, you know, they can still probably cause an infection. And, uh, I mean, we've seen... We've seen if ticks are really bad on animals that they can cause serious wounds. Um, and, um, and occasionally we've seen giraffe perhaps that have lost tails because of, of ticks. Some animals tend to lose a tail because the ticks just infest an area and, um, and end up uh, causing an infection and losing a tail. But uh, in terms of something like a tick bite fever or something like that, these animals have got an immunity to it. So it doesn't affect them like it affects us. Oh, this male really is enjoying this carcass. Well, thank you very much to everybody who's saying goodbye and hope to see me soon. I'm sure I'll be back uh, maybe in the next six to eight weeks possibly. And someone goes and leave again. Uh, perhaps we'll see. Chat to James and see, and see. But I'm sure I'll be back again. And thank you very much again for all the wonderful messages over the last two weeks and questions. It's been a lot of fun. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have. Um, but I have got to go off and guide elsewhere and spend some time in the bush in different areas. So looking forward to that. Thanks to uh, Taylor this morning for driving around and also finding some animals for us and and Steve on Bushwalk. It sounded like he had fun. So don't forget this afternoon, the team will be back on Safari Live for the Sunset Safari. But uh, a big thank you again to all of you. Kirst, thank you. And Final Control, the voices in my head, as I like to call them. Ferg, thank you, sir. It's been a pleasure. Um, we'll see you all soon. Um, enjoy carrying on watching Safari Live. Still a lot to, to happen. Thank you very much, everybody, and I'll see you all very, very soon. Goodbye.